Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing good RX's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Good RX is a healthcare company that operates a website and mobile app that tracks prescription drug prices. The company is headquartered in Santa Monica, California and was founded in 2011. It went public in 2020 and currently trades on the NASDAQ. It also provides coupons for discounts on medications. GoodRx works with more than 75,000 pharmacies in the US. The website gets 14 million visitors a month. It has partnerships with major drug companies to negotiate lower prescription prices. The platform allows individuals to consult with a doctor online and obtain a prescription for only $20 regardless of insurance status. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 15 billion market cap, they're trading at $39 a share and they have 392 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has positive free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's positive every year except in 2020. Revenue is a sales for the company and that grows a lot. It more than doubles from 2018 to 2020. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Since they're an online platform, they have a really low cost of revenue. Below that is gross profit and then operating expenses. Operating expenses on marketing, depreciation, things like that. Since the company's in growth mode, sometimes expenses eat up all your profits. As you can see in 2020, they had negative operating income. In prior years, it was positive. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt, then other income and expenses, then pre-tax income, their taxes, and the bottom line is their net income. And that was negative in 2020, positive in the other years. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. So as you can see in 2020, they had positive operating cash flow. The expenses in 2020 that made their net income negative were non-cash items. So you can see they're growing their operating cash flow each year. It almost tripled from 2018 to 2020. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. Their free cash flow grows every year from 41 million to 95 million. They've been issuing capital stock to run their business. They issued over 700 million in 2018 and 1 billion in 2020. When a company issues capital stock, this dilutes you, the current shareholder. They also issued a lot of debt in 2018. They issued over 900 million dollars of debt. They paid down about 300 million. So they added 600 million dollars of debt that year. Young companies that are in hyper growth mode tend to take on a lot of debt and equity to grow their business. But as the business grows, they'll be able to pay down their debt, buy back some of the stock, and eventually pay a dividend. Let's look at the capital structure. $700 million of equity, $700 million of debt. They're 50% equity, 50% debt. Their net debt is negative $264 million. They could pay down all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $264 million of cash left over. And their WAC is 13.4%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated 7 years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year 7, that's $24 billion. 
we discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital we get a value of the company of 18.7 billion dollars we divide that by 392 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of $48. They're trading at $39, so they're trading at an 18% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a little higher than me. They're at $50 a share. They're also saying the stock is undervalued. Nine analysts priced this stock in the past three months, and the average price was $51. The low was $36, the high was $70. This is the stock price since it IPO'd. It doesn't look like it's done so well. It peaked about $60, but it's come down quite a bit since then. So a lot of people are selling off the stock. I'm not sure why. The company is putting up good numbers. The stock has gone down 23% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 57%. The 52-week low was 33, the high was 64 and the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About two to four million shares are traded each day on this stock. 67% of the shares are held by institutions. 18% of the shares are on float or shorted. That's a really high short percentage. In the past week, this stock has gone up 11%, while the industry has gone up 2%, and the market has also gone up 2%. But in the past 30 days, this stock has done pretty poorly down 15 percent the industry is down 12 percent the market's down one percent in the past 90 days this stock has done a little better than its industry but much worse than the market analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 58 percent the industry forecast is 34 percent the market is 19 percent the forecast on the revenue is for this company to grow 25 percent the industry 16 percent and the market 10 percent if you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you would have been up and down and up and down. But if you held out, you would have been at $7,700 today, a 23% total loss. The biggest shareholder is Silver Lake at 33%, then Francisco Partners, Idea Men, Spectrum Equity, and the CEO of the company, Douglas Hirsch. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 32. The median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 28. So investors are paying $28 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 22. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in a balance sheet, and they have 711 million of equity, 394 million of tangible equity, because they have 318 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. Their return on invested capital is negative, since they have negative operating income. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity, negative net income, negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can easily cover their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are mainly cash of $968 million. The company is well capitalized. They had $96 million of free cash flow and over $1 billion of working capital. So they have $1.1 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of CompuGroup, Teladoc, and SC Works. All in the same industry as GoodRx. And if GoodRx has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse than all the price multiples. They have the highest current ratio of all the companies. They have a negative ROE since they have negative earnings. They're higher than average in debt. They're one of the bigger companies on this list at 15 billion market cap, and they don't pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at an 18% discount, but this company is doing some real exciting things. They have lots of users, and they're making it really convenient and cheaper to buy medication, which is really important for a lot of people. I rank their free cash flows 5 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. 
Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.